Hello you lovely Mario Maker person, my name is Steve and welcome back. A video about the Floris Lava in Super Mario Maker is a request I get very often. If we want to recreate this mechanic, we need a couple of things. We need a contraption which is able to test Mario's vertical position. We need this contraption to give us an output which we can turn into something lethal. Namely a P-switch or a power block needs to be triggered. We need a way to turn this contraption on and off after a set amount of time and to make matters even more complicated, we need to find a way to display this information to Mario. That's a lot of stuff that we need. So here's the thing, I've tried to build such a contraption for a couple of months now, but I was unable to find a mechanism that checks Mario's vertical position. I was convinced that there isn't a way to test for this in Super Mario Maker. I tried tons of different things, but nothing worked. I literally gave up. But. That was until recently, but in our last video we actually used the don't look left contraption, which only worked if the contraption wasn't above the current camera height. If we're able to check the vertical position of the camera, that means that we're able to check for the vertical position of Mario as well. That's the answer to a problem. It turns out that clown cars are the only entity in the game which are unloaded if they are above or below Mario. So I started to play around with this mechanism and try to come up with a contraption that allows us to create a fully functional The Floris Lava Level in Super Mario Maker. So what we are going to do in this video is to recreate my nerdy journey into the depths of Super Mario Maker's loading logic. We'll take a look on a couple of interesting designs where the floor is dangerous, which are possible because of this really weird trick. And we'll find out how close to an actual the Floris lava level we are able to get. So are you ready? Let's do this! Okay, so first let's take a look on a couple of designs where touching the floor is lethal for Mario. Here we have a small minigame. There are wigglers wiggling on the floor. Their movement seems to be a little bit weird for reasons we'll take a look at in a moment. If Mario touches the floor in this stage, something horrible happens. The ceiling collapses and munchers drop on his head. So Mario's only chance to escape this trap alive is it to collect the 5 red coins without touching the floor once. Luckily touching the wigglers is safe here and because of the fantastic wiggler platforming skills which Mario acquired over the years he is able to beat this challenge. So how does this work? It's actually surprisingly simple. There are P-switches on tracks hidden behind the bullet blasters. Bullet blasters are drawn on top of items on tracks. Because of this it's possible to hide the evil P-switches. On top of the stage is a row of brick blocks with munchers. As soon as a P-switch is triggered the munchers drop down and Mario is in a pretty bad situation. What's really interesting about this design is that P-switches below bullet blasters really mess up the standard movement of enemies and the wigglers seem to wiggle around completely random here. Here we have another design where touching the floor is lethal. This contraption works different than the one before. Here we use the fact that bullet blasters only shoot if they are on screen. The blasters are set at such a height that they only can shoot if Mario is on top of the floor. If they shoot, the ceiling collapses once again. So how is Mario supposed to beat this idea? There is a dangerous boot tower to his left. This boot tower only moves if Mario turns his back towards it. In the middle of the tower is a cannon, which constantly shoots useful but dangerous cannonballs. Our plumber needs to make use of this huge boo enemy and the cannonballs it shoots in order to make it to the exit door without touching the floor once. Sadly for Mario the exit door is blocked by a muncher but luckily the boo tower triggers a power block once he is really close to Mario which finally allows him to escape this idea. The power block is triggered because of a very simple but really useful trick. On top of the boo tower is a hidden spring. This spring activates a shell which triggers a power block as soon as the boot tower reaches a certain position. Okay, so let's take a look at the Does Mario Touch the Floor Clown Car Contraption, which we are going to use for the rest of this video. Here Mario is in a ghost house, but this ghost house has a dangerous secret. Only floor parts, which have a track piece on top of them, are actual floor parts. Because if Mario touches a brick block that has no track piece on top of it, the whole stage magically disappears. So if Mario wants to beat this area, he has to be careful not to touch the dangerous illusionary floor. This works because of the clown car 
car loading logic. Clown cars do not move if they aren't on screen. Here with a clown car, which is piloted by a brave P-switch. As soon as this clown car is loaded, it flies upwards into a muncher, which triggers its P-switch. But since the clown car only moves if it is on screen, we can set up a safe zone. As soon as Mario is below this area, the clown car is loaded and the stage disappears. But as long as he's above it, everything is fine. This contraption allows us to create levels where something bad happens once Mario is below a specific vertical position. Let's have some fun with it. Here our plumber has to survive a small minigame where chain chumps try to eat him. After a while a hidden shell met timer expires. Mario is rewarded with a key and he's able to leave. What is special about this idea is that something bad happens if Mario touches the floor here. A power block gets triggered and hungry chain chumps storm into the arena, which makes it almost impossible for Mario to survive here. This works because of the same trick we used before, but here the contraption is set up in a way that a power block is triggered instead of a P-switch. Okay, so far it was always forbidden for Mario to touch the floor, but for this design we turn this idea on its head. Literally. Here our plumber is allowed to touch the floor, but touching the ceiling is forbidden. If Mario hits his head against the ceiling, the floor collapses once again and his adventure comes to a rather abrupt ending. If Mario wants to survive this idea, he has to defeat Bowser Jr. while only using small jumps. Our Italian jump and runner becomes trapped in this small area because of an invisible one-way door contraption. Limiting Mario's jump height is a really evil idea, since our plumber heavily relies on his impressive jumping abilities in order to survive the threats Bowser throws into his path, but it is obviously not enough since Mario manages to survive this fight once again. Hmm, maybe Bowser needs to limit Mario's abilities even more. I proudly present the Everything is Forbidden Cave. This cave is pretty unstable as it tends to collapse really easily. It collapses if Mario jumps. It collapses if Mario drops in a hole in the ground. It even collapses as soon as Mario turns around. This cave is a pretty dangerous place. The only chance that our plumber has to survive here is to use the threats to his advantage. The cannonballs allow Mario to cross the gaps in the floor if he times his forward walking really careful. Wow, it looks like Mario is really unstoppable. He isn't allowed to jump or to fall down. He isn't allowed to turn around, yet still he is able to beat this level. Bowser has a really dangerous arch enemy. Okay, so far we took a look at stages where touching the floor is forbidden. But now it's finally time to try to recreate a real The Floor is Lava challenge. This is what I came up with. At the top is a clown car. This clown car cycles around in front of semi-solid platforms. The floor is lava while the clown car is in front of the red semi-solid platform. But touching the floor is safe while the clown car is in front of the green semi-solid platform. So our plumber has to be really careful when he progresses through the stage, since the floor periodically transforms into a dangerous area. This works because of an interesting trick. We use the fact that clown cars only are loaded when on screen once again. But we use another trick here as well. Clown cars can't go through clown cars on tracks. There are clown cars at the bottom, which periodically block the contraption. During this time it's safe for Mario to touch the floor, since the contraption is deactivated during this time. Sadly, this design has a couple of problems. The don't touch the floor contraption doesn't trigger immediately, which sometimes leads to a situation where the floor disappears even if Mario is safe. And for some weird reason the clown car doesn't become trapped the first time the other clown cars pass it. So here we have it, at the floor is lava design. It works, it's a little bit buggy and not really practical for a stage, but we were able to recreate the mechanic in Super Mario Maker at least to some degree. Hooray, we did it! is what I could have said. But somehow I wasn't happy with this contraption. So I sat down again and tried to come up with something that works more reliably. And that's when Mario Maker's spawning rules became really weird. Let's quickly talk about note blocks. Do you remember when I said that clown cars are the only entity which gets unloaded when it's above or below the camera height? Well, it turns out I lied to you because note blocks get unloaded too. 
This may sound incredibly boring at first glance, but it's actually huge and we will have a lot of fun with this in the future. But for now, let's use this to improve the don't touch the floor mechanism. Here touching the floor is once again lethal for Mario, but what's different here is that the contraption no longer has a small delay before it gets triggered, but works immediately. Because of this it's way harder to cheese this mechanism and it should be possible to create a non-buggy the floor is lava contraption. So let's take a look at it. At the top is the the floor is lava timer displayed. It is safe for Mario to touch the ground while there are ice blocks or block blocks in the middle of the question block square. As soon as there are lava bubbles Mario has to be somewhere where he doesn't touch the floor or the floor collapses. If he is above the floor however nothing happens and it becomes safe again for a plumber to touch the floor until the lava bubbles are shown at the display again. So here Mario has to survive until the timer runs out. Bowser Jr. spits fireballs to him, but the real challenge is to keep an eye up for the De Flores lava timer. Ok, so how does this beautiful contraption work? It's actually ridiculously simple. There is a block on tracks at the bottom. This block hits a clown car after a while. The clown car hits this note block and this note block contains a muncher. If the note block is on screen it means that Mario is on top of the ground and the muncher triggers a P switch. If the note block is not on screen however, the P switch isn't triggered. These springs are here to reposition the clown car back to its starting position. So once the block reaches the clown car, the vertical position track note block is triggered twice. During this time the floor collapses if Mario is on the ground. Afterwards it is safe to touch the ground until the cycle repeats itself. The tracks on top are set up in such a way that they display the time during which it's dangerous to touch the floor. And that's basically it. I only just realized the insane potential of off-screen note blocks and it's definitely possible to create an even better version of this concept, so I might come back and revisit this design at some point in the future. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe feel especially on fire today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!